Hi there, this is Pat, the artist behind Freestyle Fine Art, and today we're going to be talking about mixing greens. Um, I hear a lot of people tend to have issues with this, um, so we're just going to go over a couple of few different colors that you can use to make the you know more vibrant greens, and then we're just also going to talk about how to neutralize them down a little bit, and even how to mix like neutral greens already as is. Uh, the colors we're going to be using today are Thalo Blue, pigment PB15,6, Ultramarine Blue, pigment PB29, Prussian Blue, pigment PB27, Cobalt Blue, PB28, and Endothrone, Endothrone Blue, PB60. Those are just the blues. Now we're going to go to the yellows, which is Lemon Yellow, which is PY3, Gamboge, which is PY153, Perm Yellow Deep, or permanent yellow deep, which is pigment orange 62. This one can make some really interesting muted greens. Uh, then yellow ochre, which is PY 43, and green gold, which is PY 129. Uh, generally speaking, I'm not much of a fan of two greens. They usually turn out a little flat and a little weird, and they never, they just never really look right. Um, Go ahead and put a little bit of phthalo blue here, just so we know what color we're working with. And we are mixing one, two, three, four, five different puddles. I'm actually pulling phthalo blue off of a different palette here. I actually don't keep it on this palette. Um, so we're going to start off with lemon yellow is right here. This makes the most vibrant green. Um, this is actually the one, the green that I start off with the, for the most part, just because you can always neutralize colors down more. Then we're going to go with some gamboge, which is a good kind of all-purpose warm yellow. This also makes a fantastic spring green. This is actually really, really similar to a traditional sap green. Uh, which is mixing, missing a little bit of red. Then we're going to do a permanent yellow deep, which I believe, yes, is this color right here, which is this orangey color. That creates a really nice neutral army green kind of look. Then we're going to do yellow ochre, which is right here. Honestly, I can some more blue on that. Okay. This is also a nice muted army green kind of color. Then we're going to do green gold, which I love. Absolutely love this color that it makes. This is like the brightest, springiest, happiest green I've ever seen. Okay, so now we're done with those. Go ahead and wipe that down. Next we're going to use ultramarine blue, which pretty much every watercolorist has. And that is this color right here. We're mixing five little puddles. I'm just going to put some right here just so we know what that color looks like. Um, whenever you're mixing secondary colors or trying to figure out how to mix the right one, um, I would actually highly suggest making one of these. These are just one inch by one inch squares on some Canson XL watercolor paper. Um, also, pretty greens are one of the reasons a lot of people have trouble mixing them is because they think that you mix the yellow and the green in equal proportion, when in all actuality, it's like... 10% blue, 90% yellow. Generally, yellows have don't have the strongest tinting strength out of you know all of the other colors. Uh, some of the cadmium yellows do have really strong tinting strength, but that's you know a pigment thing. Now we're gonna mix it with the orange, and since this is a warm blue mixing with a warm yellow, you're not really gonna get the brightest green that's actually hardly even green at all like this is it's a great gray fantastic shadow color right there so I actually use this 
color a lot if I don't want a super granulating uh, shadow instead of doing the burnt sienna ultramarine blue mixture that a lot of people do. Um, so now we're going to do yellow ochre, which is this nice goldeny color. It, yellow ochre does tend to be a bit on the opaque side. A lot of people actually don't use it. They'll use a raw sienna instead. That's the wrong color. Um, because they feel that you know yellow ochre tends to muddy up their paintings a lot, which I can get. I get that. Um, I do. That mixture just got completely out of control. There we go. That's that's more accurate. Now we're gonna mix some green gold. This is like literally the only way I've been able to get it even slightly bright green with ultramarine blue. Is with green gold. Ooh, now we're doing Prussian blue. One of my favorite colors ever. Uh, it's kind of like Halo blue, but you know, moodier. I like to think of it as the like the the, the goth version of Thalo. For you know, stuck in the nineties. Because honestly, who wasn't at this point? Yeah, it's a nice deep oceany blue. The reason I actually have both, the reason I have, or I usually have uh, Prussian and the Thalo blue on my palette at the same time is because Prussian is actually a granulating blue as opposed to Thalo blue, which is a staining blue. Now we're going to mix with Gamboge. So this is a fun little green to make. Now perm yellow deep, which makes another very neutralized yellowy green color. Then yellow ochre, which I actually use this one a lot for like for this color mixture right here for like moss and that kind of stuff because it has a interesting granulation pattern. Then more aggressively bright and vibrant greens. So next we're gonna do cobalt blue which is an interesting color. Um, some people can't stand it, some people love it. Uh, I know Angela Fair is a big big fan of cobalt blue. Um, I believe the Lindsay the Frugal Crafter isn't a big fan from what I remember from some of her videos. Um, it's a pretty neutralized blue. It's not too red bias or too green bias. Um, I'm honestly not the biggest fan of it myself. Uh, it acts like an ultramarine. And honestly, I use them pretty interchangeably. So now we're gonna do cobalt and lemon. Cobalt and Gamboge. Then Cobalt and Permanent Yellow Deep. That's too strong on the yellow. Cobalt's also a really weak color, I find. It doesn't I like strong colors because I am of the mentality of I can always, you know, neutralize the color or do it in a thinner wash if I want, you know, if I want it to be weaker. Um, so I don't really personally see much of the point of buying these pre weakened colors because I feel like it's very. I feel like it's a waste of money, at least in my opinion. Um, now we have Indian Throne Blue, which is a deep warm blue that is non-granulating, generally speaking, and that's PV60, which Indian Throne is here. I love this color. It's like the moodier version of Ultramarine. 
Um, it's great if you're doing like flat wash stuff and you really don't want the granulation or the textures. Um, I know some botanical artists who use this color for that exact reason. There's the mid thread. So, game with Bosch. I mean, honestly, you can totally get by with just Lemon Yellow, Gamboge, Thalo Blue, and Ultramarine Blue. You don't need to get all of these. You really, truly don't. It's honestly probably a bit of a waste of money to do it. I just do it because I like things. Um, I also like trying stuff out. But if you're new and money is an obstacle for you know creating art, don't feel like you have to get all the shades of blue and yellow and purple and green and pink and all that stuff. Just get what you can afford. Get what makes you and your wallet happy. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of the yellows here too. Just so we can kind of see how they look. See, that's like a that's an or that's a that's an orange. Let's be honest here. It's barely a yellow. Yeah, so these are the greens that I generally make. Um, you can really you'll you'll you would be fine with just these these four colors right here. The Gamboge, Lemon Yellow, Thalo, Nulch Marine. You don't have to have all the extra stuff. Um I mean, it's nice, it's fun, you really don't need it, um, but I will talk a little bit about neutralizing your blues, or neutralizing your greens. So I have phthalo blue here, now I'm going to get some lemon yellow, just to mix it in, create that nice, vibrant green right there. And to neutralize it, you would want to add, you know, the opposite of green on the color wheel, which is red. We're going to go specifically with cinnabar red here, because that is a good opposite of a green made with phthalo. We're just going to mix them together until we get, you know, that color, which looks really, really, really similar in hue. It's a little washed out. So, you know, some of the more neutralized permeolo deep mixtures, like these two are essentially the same color. You neutralize it even more and create this like browny, earthy color. Just great for neutral shadows. So like my in my opinion, buy the buy, buy the vibrant colors, neutralize them down. Don't waste your money. Um Yeah, that is all I got for you. Um, thank you for stopping by and making it through this video. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any suggestions or anything else you'd like me to do, please leave it down below in the, com uh, the comments. Uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. Thank you.